tonight at nine, Tom Selleck and David Carradine in a Civil War story, Last Stand at Sabre River. In this week's I Dare You, the ultimate challenge, we dared Bubba Blackwell to jump his motorcycle over 15 buses and break Evil Knievel's world record. Plus, Daredevil Steve Hudis accepts our challenge to jump a bus over 15 motorcycles. All on I Dare You, the ultimate challenge. Here's the scene over at our stunt site on the Las Vegas Strip. Steve Hudis has been working around the clock in preparation for his world record jump. Here's the plan. Steve will get behind the wheel of a standard 31-foot-long school bus that weighs about 10 tons. Then he'll race down a 300-yard runway at 55 miles an hour. He'll hit a ramp that's only a foot and a half wider than his bus. And then attempt to launch himself over a row of 15 motorcycles. Steve is hoping to shatter the distance record for a bus jump, which is 99 feet. The big question, can he make it? His fiancée, Lindy, is here to cheer him on. Earlier, our reporter Tyler Harcourt talked to Steve about the details of this dangerous stunt. Okay, run me through this stunt from start to finish. Okay, you got it. Uh, starting about 300 yards back in this road here, I'm going to pedal to the metal, get her up as fast as I can, hopefully about 55 miles per hour. When the bus is approximately where it is right now, the front suspension is going to load up, which means the shocks are fully compressed and absorbing all this energy and speed and weight and power. When I leave the ramp, all that energy is going to what we call unload, and that's going to give me my lift. So I'm flying, I'm flying, and uh, we have counterbalanced the bus, uh, which means we have water weighted down in the back to compensate the weight of the motor and transmission to give you a nice even trajectory. If all goes well, it's going to come in nice and pretty, kind of like a 747 at LAX or something, and come down rear wheels first, get in front, probably bounce a couple of times, and uh, hopefully all goes well, and we can call it a night. Steve faces countless dangers during tonight's stunt. To begin with, he has to hit the ramp at the right speed or he'll never get this 10-ton bus in the air. And as stunt coordinator Mike Long tells us, that's no easy task. So what we're trying to do is just get you up there so it looks good. You're going to drop down from 55 to about 50 right here. It's just going to take you right down. And you normally you got to stomp on it. Just go. But once he's up, Steve has to find a way to control the bus during the violent landing. You're gonna drop like a rock. To help Steve absorb the impact, stunt designer Scott Christensen has developed a special driver's seat. These are gonna help your downward movement, and you're also gonna be suspended off of a four-point bungee cord system as well. As the bus suspension loads, when you go up the ramp, you'll feel yourself dip a little bit, and then when it unloads, you'll feel yourself come back up, and then of course on impact, right, we're gonna try to, you know, we're getting all the stress out of your spine, it's the basics, right? And as if Steve didn't have enough to worry about, he also faces the very real threat of fire caused by the series of explosions that will go off during the jump. So how does Steve feel about this stunt? It's not a day of the job. While Steve waits to be cleared for takeoff, let's find out more about this high-flying stuntman. Steve Hudis is no stranger to the spotlight. If you don't recognize him now, then you just might from these boyhood photographs. Steve was a child actor and teen heartthrob when he got his big break working on The Cowboys with legendary star John Wayne. The Cowboys was a huge production. I mean, it was one of John Wayne's last films, of course, and everybody knew it. We were all like his, his children. It was on the set of Cowboys that Steve got his first taste of stunt work. We had 1,500 head of cattle, 100 head of horses, and except for the really, really dangerous stuff, we did all of our own riding. I actually was taught how to fall off of a horse and how to rope, and I just found myself getting a real charge out of that whole aspect of it. And uh, Buzz Henry, the stunt coordinator on the Cowboys, really planted the scene. He was right there to catch me when I did my little death scene off, off the back of a horse, which was basically, I guess you could say, my first supervisor on camera stunt. I mean, here I am, 13 years old, I'm playing cowboys with an American legend. It was just, it was awesome, and I thought, this is, this is it, this is what I've got to do. 
Not long after that, Steve saw his first Daredevil show. He knew he was destined to be a stuntman. My father took a friend of mine and I to uh, the Coliseum. It was, I guess, 72 or 73. And we saw um, Joey Chedwood's uh, auto thrill show, Evil Knievel, jumping a bunch of cars. I don't even remember how many it was. And the most expensive demolition derby ever. It was all brand new cars, Rolls Royces, Cadillacs. And that was another key event in my in my decision because the Chitwoods especially, that skiing of the car on two wheels and the precision driving that they did, I just thought that was the greatest thing ever. I just remember sitting in those stands going, I want to be down there, I want to be doing that, you know? Driving is my forte, what I consider a specialty. Steve has gone on to make a name for himself as one of Hollywood's top stunt drivers. His work has appeared in countless films and TV shows, but his most cherished performance will always be as a child, working with a legend. No matter what happens in my life, I'll, I'll always have that. Here in Las Vegas, it's getting near to the moment of truth for Steve. He's sharing a good luck kiss with his fiancée, Lindy, and then he's going over to the bus ready to launch himself, hopefully, right over the top of those 15 motorcycles. Uh, I'm just praying really hard. <laughs> I'm just saying, okay, just, I just want him to be okay. Um, for his sake, I want the stunt to go well, but I, I want him to be okay. We've been, we've been engaged not even a month, and, and I want him to be okay. Well, there's, there's, a, there's a lot riding on this stunt, isn't there? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> there's a lot. Right now, Steve is getting a lift out to the starting line. One of his assistants is at the wheel while Steve psychs himself up. You can bet he's got a lot on his mind as he heads off to set a new world record. There's the ramp, and those are the 15 motorcycles. Now we know that Steve is ready to go, and Tyler is going to take us through the stunt. All right. 21,000 pounds of power at the end of the runway. That is Steve Hudis. And we have got some acceleration. Steve is stepping on the gas. He is moving towards the runway. He's made the turn to the runway now. He is coming straight ahead. He's heading down this ramp. He's gaining speed as we go here. We're trying to get up to 55, hopefully 60. 60 miles an hour. Here he comes. He's about to hit the ramp. He's looking straight. It looks good. The fire department is moving in, and there's still no sign of Steve. Hopefully, he's on his way out. Wait, there he is. He is out. Luckily, a crew member is there to break his fall as he jumps out of that burning bus. They are spraying him with foam right now. Let's hope he's all right. That was scary. All right, Steve is up. He's giving a thumbs up. It looks like he's okay. We are on our way over to him now. It'll take a few moments before Tyler can talk to Steve about the jump. The stunt crew has to give Steve a checkup and make sure he isn't badly injured. While they do that, let's take another look at that incredible jump. It was an absolutely perfect takeoff. And there's the explosion. Massive flames, the whole bus catching fire, nearly tipping over, and you can see Steve at the wheel, surrounded by flames. He was inside the blazing bus for at least 20 seconds after it landed, and then rolled to a stop. What's going through your head? What's going through your head right now? I should have been in college. <laughs> no, that was awesome. That was you no. Know, we oh we, we made a lot of light about this stunt, but I tell you, that thing looks pretty serious. Oh man, I... let's get his helmet off here. Oh. Steve, what? <laughs> run, run me through this yeah. stunt from start to finish. Okay, Mike said action. I uh, I went to stab the pedal and I missed. There's nothing there. I don't know. Oh man. So, sorry guys, am I burning? Not on fire. Okay, it looks like he's catching on fire right now, actually, here. He is very, very hot. This is not, this is, this is not a joke, folks. This is a serious real deal.
Well, it looks like Steve is okay, but while his crew makes sure that he isn't injured, let's take another look at that jump. Now, he cleared the 15 motorcycles by a long way, but we're still waiting to hear if he broke the current record of 99 feet. The most frightening moment was the fire that engulfed the bus with Steve still inside. It seemed like forever before he was able to fight his way through those flames and get out. But Steve is okay now and he's ready to talk about what happened. Let's get in here, let's get in here with Steve. Steve. Yeah. Oh, Tyler. Lots of things, lots of things to ask you. First of all, congratulations. Lots of things to ask you. But first, first thing I want to know is it seemed like the flame totally engulfed that whole bus. It was all over the bus. Was the, were you expecting that? Or? No, no, I was expecting only the, uh, the rear end of fire. I assumed it would all go back with the momentum, but it just it came around me. I, I was like, oh, it's mighty warm in here. Uh, and we were making having fun with this stuff because you know, sure. Bubba, Bubba's jumping the bike over 50 bus you're jumping a, a bus over 50 bikes okay it's a little bit of fun but I'll tell you something this this is all serious business well very much so I mean once you leave the pad the, 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 the ramp I'm just along for the ride basically and, and, and I'd like to commend the, the, uh, the effects network um, for their fabulous job on the bus I don't think it would have gone up as well had it not been for the hours and hours of careful planning well here's somebody who had a little bit of a vested interest in this <laughs> Uh, are you bailing right now? Like, I had to be literally carried over here. Did you see my friend carrying me over here? Okay, the stuntman is okay. His fiance is not holding up very well, okay? My legs are shaking. Everything works. Everything works. <laughs> the, 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 stunt, the stunt basically went the way you wanted it to? Oh, yeah. I mean, I wanted to throw those bikes. Everything else is... You, you, you take those risks to repair it. So, uh, I, I didn't know, see? Because I never saw bike one. I swear to God. I, all I saw was ramp, sky, and ground, and I'm, it felt like a heck of a long flight. And I'm thinking, I think I cleared him, you know, because I would have heard something or whatever. And then, you know, and then what really kind of surprised me was the fact that we were still burning. I mean, Steve, this is unbelievable. You take a look at this. It looks like a bit of a like a bit of a burn here, but I'll tell you, all worth it because I've just been notified that we've got a new world record: 108 feet. Yes. <laughs> Bubba Blackwell turns the tables when he tries to jump his motorcycle over 15 buses. When I dare you, the ultimate challenge continues. Motorcycle daredevils. No one takes it closer to the edge than this daring breed. They're all alone on that bike with no bodywork to protect them. They can only rely on their skill and their nerve to survive. And when they tackle the world of stunts, all too often it ends in disaster. Those stunts were risky, just look at this. Imagine what could happen when a bike rider tries to jump 15 buses. Right now, motorcycle daredevil Bubba Blackwell is getting ready to do just that. Here's what we expect to see moments from now. Bubba will climb onto his Harley Davidson XR750. Then he'll race towards the ramp at 95 miles an hour and attempt to launch himself over a row of 15 buses. Each bus is eight and a half feet wide. They're lined up about a foot and a half apart, so the total distance between the launch and the landing ramps is 150 feet. If Bubba makes it, then he breaks the record of 14 buses set by Evil Knievel back in October 1975. But if Bubba falls short, he knows he could break a lot more than that. Reporter Tracy Melshaw finds out more about the man we dared to try this dangerous stuff. Now, Bubba, when were you first bitten by this adventure bug? Well, I actually saw Evil Knievel on the Wild World of Sports one day when I was about eight years old. And I thought, wow, this guy is so cool. Watched him make his motorcycle jump and immediately went outside and started putting some trash cans out on the sidewalk, building some board ramps and pedaling as best I could to clear all those garbage cans. 
Evil Knievel was an idol to a generation of driveway daredevils. I've got this great photograph of whenever I was an eight-year-old little boy tearing open a Christmas present, and it was Evil Knievel's wide up toy. I had that, too. Did you really? That, that was a, people, that was the best toy in the world. I'm telling you. What was it like? on your childhood growing up in Alabama? We were a very, very uh, lower middle class family and well, with a lot of dreams, you know? This is America, this is a place of dreams. So my mother and father would nurture my dreams. They would support me in what it was I wanted to do. And they always knew I was motorcycle crazy. Bubba turned his passion for motorcycles into a career in racing. I had some good success racing. I won Daytona twice. I won on that, you know, the world's most famous speedway, and what a thrill that was. So that really made me feel like that's what I was going to do. But, you know, it kept coming back on me. Evil can evil. All right, how was it done? We're having Daredevil career. But maybe that Daredevil was just bitten off a little bit too much. Evil can evil ever since I was eight years old. Today is not that day. Let's get out! But Bubba wants to do more than just follow in Evil's footsteps. He's determined to break every one of his records. On April 26, 1998, Bubba cleared 20 cars, breaking Evil's record of 19. And on the 4th of July, 1999, Bubba tied Evil's record of 14 buses. Tonight, he has his sights set on shattering that record by jumping 15. Bubba Blackwell is sizing up the challenge ahead of him. His helmet camera shows the 150-foot jump stretching out in front. It must look like an eternity for Bubba. It looks like he's ready to go, but he's taking his time backing down. Remember, the next time he's on that ramp, he's going to be racing up at 95 miles an hour. There you can see his family watching on with concern. It all comes down to this moment. Here he goes for one last test run. Bubba says that he's going to retire this bike after tonight's jump. It's served him well over the years in countless successful jumps. He's stretching out. Everything is looking good, and he's looking confident. This is the showman in Bubba. He's doing a wheelie from ramp to ramp, the full 150-foot distance of that jump. circling around in the shadows. The anticipation is building and it looks like he's getting ready to go. And there it goes, Bubba Blackwell is off. He's now on the ramp. No, he's pulled off the ramp and he's called off the jump. We thought he was going to go that time. But Bubba has called off the jump. We can see his family there looking on. They're confident in Bubba. You can see that they're very nervous. No wheelie this time as Bubba passes those buses for one last time. He'll be circling round again. And as he disappears in the shadows, we can barely see him. Nervous anticipation of the Blackwell family, broken only by the sound of that Harley Davidson. This time it looks like the real thing. He's getting ready to go again. And here he comes. Bubba Blackwell is winding up for this record breaking jump. Here he comes. 15 buses. And yes, he's made it. He is over. He has broken that record but he's gone screaming towards that wall and he's fallen over. The bike is down, but Bubba is on his feet. You can see the safety crew running in there. Stunt coordinator Joe Scorpin leading the way. Bubba does appear to have suffered some injury. We should be able to talk to him in a minute. 
But before we do, let's take another look at that incredible jump. There it is, and that is a new world record. And you can see his family coming over to him now. That's going to be quite some celebration. Well, I'm starting to wear off the sore from my leg. Heck, it's cold out here. Is Jamie sense of relief? Yes. Very much. That was great. That was great. Did you know he was going to do it the minute he became airborne? Yeah. Yeah. So fast. Um, yeah, I just can't believe it. We cleared the, uh, cleared the gap because, in all honesty, and, and I promise you, I was really thinking that I was going to come up short. The last ride up to take off, I was kind of thinking that uh, it just didn't, it was just, just something wasn't there. I checked the angle earlier, and usually I jump at approximately 12 or 13 degrees angle. And my angle uh, finder said that it was only 10, which really concerned me because, you know, the ramps that we used, we had to elevate to get over the buses and then build the approach. But once again, Clay and Ron done their job, and sure, maybe I could have jumped one or two more buses, but trust me, this one's good. This one's good for now. Any final words for Evil? Evil, I love you, buddy. And, uh... For creating a sport that I get to go and have this much fun doing. And I'll talk to you later. More heart-stopping moments provided by people who probably have to ring round to get